Traditionally, sexuality in the ancient world is associated with the Greek and Indian civilizations. Egypt seems to be a sacred and far from sensual world. But this is wrong. It is worth remembering the images of noble ladies in translucent robes and portraits of queens with golden cups in the form of lotuses on the nipples. But sometimes deep meanings lurked behind unconcealed eroticism. After all, sexuality in the Egyptians is the driving force of the divine development of the universe. Ancient Egyptian sexuality is sacred from the beginning. According to legend, the city of Unu, which the Greeks called Helitopolis, was created by the solar creator Atom, masturbating. In this case, the shape of his hand was taken by his wife, Hathor Nebethetepet, the goddess of love, joy, and ecstasy, and at the same time, the patroness of death, as a pledge of eternal life. It was believed that it was the sex appeal of the goddess of love that stimulated the development of the world. Osiris, the lord of the world of the dead, who succeeded in defeating death, was depicted with an erect phallus. This signified the endless natural force that, together with the waters of the Nile, fertilizes the world. According to the legend, Osiris was cut into pieces by the enemy and reassembled by his wife Isis and sons Anubis and Horus. According to the legend, Osiris was able to revive only when Isis not only put his body back together, but also created a phallus from the mud of the Great Nile, which was lost in the waters of this river. The ancient Egyptians likened the deceased to Osiris and swaddled men's dead bodies, securing the sexual organ in an elevated position. They believed that sexual power could defeat death. Seth, god of rage, sandstorms, destruction, chaos, war and death, tried to subdue Horus, god of the sky, and tricked him into bed. But Horus cunningly placed his palms under Seth's genitals and managed to remain virgin without losing his right to universal power. Isis, the mother of Horus, decided to take revenge, collected her son's seed in a vessel, and secretly poured it on lettuce, the favorite food of the lecherous Seth. Having eaten lettuce from his garden, Seth found himself impregnated by Horus, lost his power, and became an object of ridicule for the other gods. It only remains to add that lettuce is considered by the Egyptians to be one of the strongest aphrodisiacs. The ancient Egyptians believed that male sexuality was a prerequisite for power over the world. This belief is evidenced by the massive limestone statues of Min, the god of fertility, clutching his phallus in his hand. Female sexuality in ancient Egyptians was very attractive and no less dangerous. The legend of the goddess of love, Golden Hathor, who turned into lion-headed Sekhmet trampling humanity, is well known. One of the main rituals in the temples was the ritual of Sekhetep Sekhmet. The most effective way to pacify Hathor was to intoxicate her with beer and sacred wine, as a result of which the fierce lioness was transformed into the cat Bastet, the patroness of fertility, femininity, and exquisite eroticism. In ancient Egypt, the great consort of the king was honored as the earthly incarnation of Hathor, just as the pharaoh was the earthly incarnation of Horus. The chief queen was the female house of the king. This institution looked almost nothing like a stereotypical oriental harem. It was inhabited by junior queens and Nefret, beautiful concubines. The latter were considered direct servants of Hathor, called to continuously revive the vitality and sexual energy of the king. The nephrutes were robes of the finest linen and beaded netting, and often they were only loincloths, but bracelets, necklaces, and massive wigs were a must. Their images of them playing musical instruments, dancing, singing, and playing with the king in senate a game somewhat reminiscent of checkers have survived to our time. If we remember, Ramses II, his innumerable wives and concubines bore him 111 sons and 67 daughters. And these are only those children whom the royal father officially recognized. Behind the walls of the residence of the pharaohs the matter was much simpler. This is evidenced by secular texts, 
a special place among which is occupied by the Ramsesid Papyrus, Chester Biddy I, and Papyrus Harris 500. They tell about the meeting of lovers, which was supposedly watched by trees. There are words in the text that even a crocodile lying on a shoal would not be an obstacle to lovers standing on different sides of the river. Marut, love, and Najemet, attraction, are presented as a condition similar to a serious illness. If the passion is not satisfied, the city beauty sits for hours at the mirror, applying makeup to attract the attention of the pharaoh's entourage. It is worth noting that it was Egyptian women who were considered the most beautiful women of the Mediterranean in ancient times. Today, it is not known exactly how marriages were concluded in ancient Egypt. But there is no doubt that a woman had enough rights enshrined in the marriage contract. It is also known that almost girls were given in marriage. And this is not to mention the widespread conditional dynastic child marriages in royal families. Marriages between relatives of all kinds were legalized in ancient Egypt, sisters and brothers, nieces and uncles, etc. According to the statistics that have survived to our time, 38 out of 161 weddings are marriages between brother and sister. Family was always honored in Egypt, and unfaithfulness of a wife was punishable by death. Male adultery was not prosecuted, but in case of violence on the part of a man towards a woman, the perpetrator was held accountable before the court, and a repeated wife-beater faced a penalty of 100 sticks.